Good morning, sister. Good morning. <clears throat> good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome to PTP OG, practicing the presence of God. Pastor Michael Hayes back with you on this uh, halfway dreary, halfway lovely Wednesday morning. <laughs> Glad to have you with us this morning. God is so good, and we are so blessed to have you uh, join us. I know that uh, it's midweek. It's what we call hump day, hump day. And uh, so, you know, sometimes we need a little bit to get over that hump. So just want you to listen, just, just get out here and stretch a little bit. Oh, just stretch. Woo! Get up, stretch, wake up, shake your neck out a little bit, ah, get yourself feeling a little bit alive and well today because it is hump day and sometimes hump day can really, <laughs> it can be hard to get over that hump, right? But God is good and uh, we are so blessed uh, to be here this morning. Listen, we're going to get right into our word for the day, which is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 26. And we are looking at a very long passage today. And I'm not going to take long today because the passage is so long. I just kind of want to hit it and quit it and allow you to uh, be able to hit the rest of the day uh, prayerfully with a blessing. From the Lord. So let's look here. It's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, and we're looking at verses 20 through 28. Verses 20 through 28. This is from the uh, modern King James Version of the Bible. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no talebearer, the fighting ceases. As coals to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome man to kindling fire and to kindle fighting, sorry. The words of a talebearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a broken piece of pottery with silver waste. He who hates pretends with his lips and stores up deceit within him. And when he makes his voice gracious, do not believe him for seven hateful things are in his heart. He whose heart or he whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be shown before the congregation. Whoever digs a pit shall fall into it, and he who rolls a stone, it will turn back and roll on him. Verse 28, a lying tongue hates those afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Today we're speaking from the subject, tailbearers and cancel culture. Tailbearers and cancel culture. Let, let's, let's briefly bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father God, thank you this morning for your love and blessings. We uh, praise you, God, for another day of worship and another day of life another day of breath where we can breathe in, oh Lord, the gift that you so graciously appoint to us every day. Lord, right now we ask that your presence be with us as we speak upon this very serious subject. And we ask, Lord, that you would lead and guide us into all your truth. Give us understanding in your word and by your grace. And Lord, we know that it is through your salvation, your grace, your love that we are saved. Please give us this day, then, our daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me get here real quick. So we're looking here at uh, Proverbs 26, and we're just finishing out the rest of this chapter. And uh, as I started this chapter before, you know, I talked about what this chapter was talking about. The chapter basically has been talking to us about foolish things, uh, things that fools get into, the types of practices and uh, issues that evolve and uh, emanate from people who, do, who are fools and who 
get involved into foolish things. And today is absolutely no different. These last eight verses of the uh, book of Proverbs chapter 26 here are discussing very, very clearly and distinctly uh, the problem, the issue, the foolish and foolhardiness of using our mouths uh, in order to go around telling tales on people. Uh, tale bearing is what it's called in the Bible. Some today might call it gossip. Uh, others might call it talking behind somebody else's back. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, this is talking about what is tail bearing, someone might ask. Tail bearing is going around speaking negative words against somebody. It does not matter whether the words are true. Now, I need to make this point very clear. This is not necessarily slandering because slander is telling negative tales on somebody that aren't true. In other words, you're lying on somebody. That's not necessarily what tail bearing is. Tail bearing is just talking negative about somebody all the time, constantly giving forth and spreading negative rumors, negative words, whether they're true or not is irrelevant. Just the act itself is a problem for God and is a foolhardy adventure for any person who calls himself a Christian. This is not something we need to be involved in. We are not called to bring up stories and tell tales on people. Whether they're true or not is, again, irrelevant. God has not called us to use our mouths for such purposes. And that's the point. That's the point. And so, uh, you know, Solomon really gets into this here. And he, he <laughs> I mean, he uses eight verses uh, to describe this, this, this problem, this, situ this situation, this issue, this sin, if I would, if you would, this sin. It is a sin. <clears throat> it absolutely is a sin. Now, um, what are we? We talked about on yesterday quarreling and meddling in people's business, other people's business. This is an extension of that. Now we're talking about, uh, you know, we, we are talking about people who are constantly opening up, their, opening up their mouths for the purposes of hurting other people. Uh, it reminds me, like the title of today's cancel culture. Now, uh, you know, I don't know if you understand what that term means, but if you've lived in anywhere from 2016, 17 to 2020, you, you pretty much have experienced in one way or another cancel culture. That is where uh, people look into the past of others and find out something negative, something uh, you know, detrimental to people's reputation and bring it out and pull it out for everybody in the world to see so that we can tear this person down as much as humanly possible and keep them from being any more successful in their lives. And this has been happening all over the country, uh, yea, even all over the world, but it's mainly in the United States where we are just basically going around trying to cancel people, especially people that we consider to be successful or celebrities or popular or people who, uh, you know, are better off than other people, uh, you know, but it doesn't really matter uh, it's gotten to a point now where just if I can find any quote unquote dirt on anybody, right? If I can find any negative news about anybody, and it doesn't matter when it happened, if it happened last week, last month, if it happened today, or if it happened in uh, 1995, doesn't matter. If I can find it out, I'm going to bring it out before the world and display it and put it on social media and let everybody know, I'm going to use my words to be able to disseminate this negative, uh, this negative uh, uh, news or uh, negative description of this person as much as humanly possible to tear this person down. That is not, that is not how a Christian should live their life. 
That is not what God gave us a mouth for. And so what Solomon describes here is a person who just doesn't have any discipline of their mouth, has no discipline of their life. A person who, quite frankly, is not particularly successful in their own lives and is going around trying to find a reason to uh, basically blame everybody else for their problems. So I'm going to find something wrong in everybody else's life and thereby, thereby make myself look better. And that's what's happening here. These are people who are trying to find any bad news they can find on somebody else in order to cancel them, in order to downgrade them, in order to pull them down, okay? And this is not godly. <clears throat> so notice what he says in verse 20, where there's no wood, there's no fire, the fire will go out, that is, and where there's no tail bearer, their fighting will cease. So much argument, fighting, division, despondency among people in the church happens as a result of people who love to tell tales, who just love to tell stories about everybody else except themselves. And this, it what, listen, it keeps the fire going. It keeps a fire going. James talks about the tongue being a fire, a fire that no man can quench. Fire is destructive. It is an image of something destructive that tears down, rips apart, and destroys whatever it touches. And this is what tail bearing does. Now, here's the problem. We, we Listen, we have, <laughs> it has become such a habit in our lives that we don't even see how negative and the destructive power that this does in our lives. And so we just, we just see it as, well, that's just, this is just life. That's what people do. No, that is, not what hum, that is not what Christians are supposed to do. He says in verse 21, as coals to burning coals, wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome man to kindling fighting. I would dare say that most fights, most arguments, and most wars that happen on this planet are the result of some tail bearer. Somebody telling stories negatively about other people. And here's the thing about tail bearers. While the initial tale or the initial story or whatever it is that they're speaking might actually have some truth in it, you know how we are. We have a tendency to embellish and push forward even further than what they really were, the story and make it more dramatic, right? <laughs> we're, because we're, we're in this drama age where everything has to be ultra dramatic and everything's gotta be to the, you know, 10th degree. It's gotta be to the, you know, you know, to the top level. Everything's gotta, oh, did you see that? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. And we take everything way out of proportion and we get other people's feelings hyped up about things and we cause fighting and arguing and division among God's people or even among our neighbors or our friends. This is not the way God has called us to utilize our speech. The words of a tail bearer, verse 22, are as wounds and they go down into the innermost part of the belly. Now, this is an interesting text because it's actually interpreted. If uh, It can be interpreted two ways. Uh, what the text is really saying in some cases is it's really being looked at as it actually is saying that the words of a tail bearer are something that are easy to swallow. They actually taste good, but when they get in the belly, they cause indigestion, <laughs> right? So if you've ever had a food that you really like to eat and it's really good, but when it goes down into your system, it causes a lot of damage a lot of gas or something that's what it's talking about that's what the words of a tail bearer are like they swallow down good Ooh, 
mm, tell me more, give me more, give me more. Yeah, tell me more about this person. But then eventually it causes destruction in your life. It says uh, verse 23, burning lips and a burning lips and a wicked heart are like a broken piece of pottery with silver on it. What is this talking about? It's talking about, you know, if you have a pot or if you have a, a bowl or something made of ceramic or something and, uh, you know, it falls to the ground and it crashes, it breaks into pieces. Picking up one of those pieces is like, is, is called a pottery sheared in biblical language, a pottery sheared, okay? And taking one of those pieces, think about this, take one of those pieces and you pour hot silver on it and let it mold around that broken piece. This is what Solomon says, the words of a talebearer are like. <laughs> the lips of a talebearer are like that broken piece of pottery that has silver on it. In other words, it's a useless thing. It's a broken piece of pottery. It, the thing it was originally created and made for, it can no longer be used for, but now you put some silver on it and somebody thinks, oh, it might have value now because some silver has been put on it. So that, that's what the lips of a tail bearer are like. They really don't have any value, but because of the words that they're saying and the way that they're using their words, people have a tendency to think, oh, what they're saying is valuable when it really isn't, when it really isn't. Verse 24, he who hates pretends his lips, pretends with his lips and stores up deceit within him. And when he makes his voice gracious, don't believe him for there are seven hateful things in his heart. In other words, tail bearers have a way of pretending, oh, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> have you ever, you ever had people do that? It, you know, you call them out on it. Like, why are you, you, why are you talking so negatively about this person? Oh, honey, I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to let you know. Believe me, oh, I love sister so-and-so. Oh, I love brother so-and-so. I love them with, oh, I, I, you know, I've known them for over 30 years. I love them, but I just wanted you to know that, you know, they have this little thing about them that maybe you should be aware of. <laughs> have you ever had that happen to you? These people, they know how to use their words to sound gracious. Oh, I'm just trying to help out. Oh, I'm just trying to be of service to people. That's all. I, you know, I, I know it sounds negative. I'm not trying to make it too negative. I'm not trying to be negative. While the whole time they're sowing seeds of doubt and division and derision and strife. And these are the same people who watch this, who will start a fight. I, I'm going to tell you, I've seen this in the church so much. These are people who will start an argument, start a fight, and then they'll stand back and act like they didn't have anything to do with it. And watch while people continue to bluster each other and batter each other upside the head with these same foolish stories that this tail bearer started out telling. I've seen it over and over and over again. It's unbelievable. <laughs> who, who, me? I, no, I, no, pastor, I wasn't. Why are we involved in this kind of foolishness? Why are we involved in this cancel culture where we're trying to hurt people with our words? And that's really the point that Solomon is making here is that foolish people use their words to cause division, to cause fighting, to cause argument and separation between people and to cause people's tearing down of their reputations. That's what foolish people do. And you say, well, why is it foolish? Why is it foolish? Especially if you're telling the truth. Why is it foolish? I'll tell you why. Notice with me the last two verses. <laughs> Whoever digs a pit shall eventually fall into it. And he who rolls a stone it will turn back on him and roll him over. 
Did you hear that? That's verse 27, Proverbs 26. So here is what Solomon is saying. What you're doing to others, that's what's going to happen to you. What you're roll, the stone you're rolling over others, that same stone is going to come back, turn around and roll back downhill and roll over you. The same pit that you're digging for somebody else, that's the pit that you're going to be thrown into. It reminds me of the story of Esther and Haman. Wasn't it Haman? Who was bringing accusations against her uh, uncle Mordecai, right? S uh, uh, accusations that were not true, but he just was sick of uh, Mordecai because Mordecai wouldn't bow down to him when he was parading through the city. And he wanted him to bow down to him. He didn't like him. Oh, he didn't want to bow down to me. Okay, well, I'm going to get rid of him and kill all his people. And he built these gallows. He had these gallows built for Mordecai and for his people, for his family to be hung on because he thought he had the power to do it. And lo and behold, eventually when the king found out the truth, and how many know the king will always find out the truth? The truth will always come out. Lo and behold, the very gallows that he set up to kill Mordecai and his family with, he wound up being hung on them. That story is very pivotal for us today. If firing at somebody else, remember those same arrows can be pointed and will be pointed back at you. See, that's the point. That's the point. So we need to wake up today and we need to use our mouths for something a lot better. Listen, this is not anything new that God is talking about here through the pen of Solomon. In fact, turn with me quickly to Leviticus chapter 19, verses 16, 17, and 18. I'm going to run through this very quickly, and then I'm going to let you go today. Leviticus chapter 19, verses 16, 17, and 18. Here's the remedy for, you know, taking ourselves out of this cancel culture, for keeping ourselves from being involved in this cancel culture. Here's the remedy. Here, here is a way for us to utilize what God has given us in a righteous way. Notice with me in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16, he says this, thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor, I am the Lord. <clears throat> so God, long time ago, this is way back early on in Leviticus, when he first brought his people out of Egypt, by the, by the leadership of Moses, huh? And he brings them out. He brings them out on eagle's wings, as some have said. And he tells them, listen, you have built now, you're building a society now of people who are your brothers and your sisters. He says, do not become a tail brother, bearer, excuse me, against your brother or your sister. Don't speak uh, stories of negativity against those with whom you have to do with. Don't do that. You shall not go up and down in your among your people telling tales about folk. Come on, say amen. And you shall not contribute to uh, their death or their destruction. That's what it says in Leviticus 19, verse 16. So number one, stop being a tale bearer. Stop running around and telling that. You don't have to do that. Number two, number two, Leviticus 19, verse 17 says this, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, but thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Now notice with me, watch this. Point number two, if you have something against your neighbor, if you have an issue with your neighbor, something you've heard and something you found out that they're doing wrong, that they're involved in, go to your neighbor and you talk to them about it. That's what the text is saying. You rebuke them and not suffer the sin to come upon him or yourself. If you've got something to say, say it to the person. Don't tell your friends and your neighbors and your, 
your, your loved ones and your enemies too about this individual and what they're doing, you go to them. Be a brother instead of an accuser. And don't hate your brother in your heart. See, that's what the text says, verse 17 of Leviticus 19. When you, when you and I refuse to talk to our own brothers and sisters about the issues that we have for them, we are developing, hear me, we develop hatred in our hearts for them. That's what the text is telling you. You're developing a negative attitude towards them because you're not doing anything to truly solve it. What you're doing is you're spreading evil as much as you possibly can. Lord have mercy. Point number three, last point, Leviticus 19 verse 18 says this, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Here's what God says. God says, when you go to that person, when you talk to that person, when you come and seek to rebuke that person for something that they've done, don't take an attitude of revenge. That's not your attitude. You're not trying to get back at them. You're not trying to punish them for what you feel they've done to you. No, instead, Think about it as if you were them and how you would want somebody to come to you. How would you want somebody to approach you in your wrongdoing or in your problems or in your issues in life? How would you want somebody to come to you? Wouldn't you want them to come to you with grace, with love, with patience, with kindness, with long suffering? Huh? Wouldn't you want them to come to you with a certain ounce of humility? Of course you would. Well, if you would do that for yourself, do it for the person that you're talking to. Do it for your brother and your sister. Somebody say amen today. Love your neighbor as yourself. Treat others as you would want yourself to be treated. Jesus said that over and over again. Here's the problem with tailbearing. Here's the problem with tailbearing. Tailbearing creates a situation, hear me, where you lock yourself in to being one-sided against a person. Now, what do I mean by that? This is what I mean by that. When you tailbear, instead of going to the person and de dealing with them and their issue, you and them alone, when you tailbear and you start spreading this news like you're some kind of news reporter, what happens is now you become a servant of this news that you've told as opposed to being a servant of God. Now you're a servant of this news. You have to back up this news. You've got to justify why you told this news. And so even if the news turns out to be false, even if the tales that you have told turn out to be not that big a deal, you are invested in it being a big deal because you have to justify why you were tail bearing. And that's, you see that happening today over and over again, people are caught up in these tales that they've told against other people, even when it's not that big a deal, or even when it's found out that it's not true. These people are so invested in the fact that they told the tale, and they're so trying to justify themselves. And Well, the reason why I told it is because it is true. No, it's not true. We just found out. It's not true. Well, I don't care. I don't care. He did something wrong. He's, he is evil. He's evil. It might not be that, but it's something else wrong with him. And that's how you get when you become a tale bearer. You become a slave to your tales. And the rock that you've been trying to push on somebody else now starts to roll over you. The pit you've been digging for somebody else now you're falling into, see, don't be a tail bearer. Don't try to cancel anybody's culture. Huh? How about developing a culture of love and kindness and grace and mercy towards others the way that Jesus has towards you? How about being careful and patient and disciplined in your speech? Could you imagine if God was a tail bearer? 
Could you imagine if Jesus just decided to tell tales about you? Oh, what tales he could tell. <laughs> oh my goodness, what tales he could tell on us. Mercy. Stay positive. Stay positive. Stay out of the negativity of the world. Don't become a tale bearer. Huh? Become a gospel speaker. How about that? Tell the truth about the word of God and give a message of salvation to all and bless others instead of cursing. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for this message today. I pray, Lord, that we would cease becoming tale bearers and that, Lord, if we do have a tale to tell, let it be the tale of the fact of how you came and saved our lives, Lord, when we were in the midst of our sins. How you set us free from our selfishness, our pride, our arrogance, and our anger, our frustrations, and our concerns. How you have given us this freedom, Lord, freely of your grace, and how it's available to any and everyone who would receive it. Let us, Lord, use our mouths for your glory. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, God be with you. God bless you. I pray that God has been a blessing to you and that this has been a blessing to you. If it has, please like it and share it on your Facebook page and subscribe if you haven't already to our Facebook uh, page, ministry page. Just type in inside your search engine of your Facebook app, type in hashtag PTPOG. It will pull up a purple icon, much like the one you see behind me. Click on it and join our ministry family. We'd love to have you be a part. And if you're watching this by way of our YouTube channel, oh, we praise the Lord for you stopping by. Hey, listen, consider subscribing to this channel. We'd love to have you be a part. And we have new videos posted pretty much every day or every other day. And if you would leave a nice comment or whatever comment you like to leave, doesn't matter. Leave a comment down below whether or not you liked this video or things that we could do to improve or just questions that you might have. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you. I love you. Take care and we'll see you soon on tomorrow. Proverbs 27, I believe we're going to start on tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 Central, 6.30 Mountain, 5.30 Pacific. This is Pastor Michael Hayes signing off. God bless you. Have a great and wonderful day. And don't be a tail bearer. Don't be a tail bearer, but be a gospel winner in Jesus Christ. Amen. Take care, guys. Peace.